Hey everyone, what's going on? Paul here, and today I'm going to show you guys how we feed frozen thawed rats to our ball pythons. Now, I did used to have a video out a little while ago um, called How to Get Your Snake to Eat Frozen Thawed Rodents. Um, there was a bit of misinformation in that video, and I wasn't too happy with it, so I deleted it. But basically, I'm going to show you guys how I've been doing it for the last 10 years. And uh, you could try it out, see if it works for you guys, and uh, if it does, all the better. You know, it's, uh, it's 2016, um, snakes are quite popular, basically all throughout North America. There's many pet stores that will sell you frozen thawed rodents. There's absolutely no reason um, at this time to feed live to your snakes. You will never catch uh, me feeding snakes live animals. Um, unless I absolutely have to. Normally, if we're getting babies, um, if babies are being born and they haven't eaten within like a month, sometimes more, then yeah, we'll try a uh, live mouse. But uh, don't ever expect to see any footage of um, snakes killing live mice on this channel. Um, really not something uh, I like seeing myself on YouTube. Um, you know, sometimes it has to be done, especially when you're dealing with other types of animals, typically wild cots, things like that. But uh, yeah, I much prefer frozen thawed. I find it just so much easier. Um, frozen thawed rodents keep in the freezer for about six months. So it's very easy for you to, um, to buy large quantities and conserve them for a long time. Uh, whereas live rodents, unless you're breeding them yourselves, which is a whole nother story, uh, I simply do not have the time, nor would I ever want to do that. I find rodents stink, and uh, they're too much work. But um, yeah, so if, you, if you're not breeding your own rodents, you're going to have to go to a pet store, uh, you know, every couple of uh, weeks at least, um, to buy rodents. You're in charge of keeping that rodent uh, healthy while it's in your care. And then, of course, if you're feeding live, you have to make sure that your, uh, your snake actually eats the rodent. Sometimes, you know, the snake is not interested and then you're stuck with this rodent. Um, so yeah, just for me, frozen thawed is the best way to go about it. Also, by having all of our snakes feeding on frozen thawed rodents, um, we're basically able to sell animals. Uh, I wouldn't say faster than people who feed live, but we're never gonna have a problem with somebody who wants a snake that eats frozen thawed, um, but then our animal eats live and then sometimes they have to switch it over there themselves it could be a little bit challenging all our animals are already on frozen thawed before we ever sell them uh, unless you know sometimes there will be like maybe one out of like 50 babies a year that uh, is very slow to get onto frozen but generally we'll keep that animal back we'll feed it less often oftentimes they end up being a little bit smaller but uh, it just works out better in the long run because we want to sell snakes to everybody and you know snakes are awesome pets especially for uh young children i find so because their care is their care requirements is so little they need very little maintenance they need to eat about once a week which i'm going to talk about here in a second um but you know sometimes parents obviously don't want to feed live animals to their pets so anyways um Let's get on to the video. This first part here, I'm going to tell you how we go about sizing our rodents that we're going to feed to our snakes. So I am actually going to pull one out here and hopefully the animal <laughs> will not bite because I'm going to show you how we go about sizing. So, and again, this depends on the species. I'm going to, we're, we're using ball pythons in this video because, you know, this is what we have mostly here. So this right here is our female butter chocolate ghost. And you can see she's already like trying to bite basically. Uh, so I'm gonna try to do this without getting myself bit or one of these frozen rodents bit. Um, so basically there's two ways you could go about feeding your snakes. You could either feed them for growth, uh, feed them to maintain their weight. Generally you do this when they're adults, you know. Um, or you could feed basically big prey items um, and feed them less often or what we prefer to do here feed them smaller prey items but feed them more often generally this is better if you want to get your snake to grow a little bit quicker so you can see this right here is about the thickest point of this snake 
and this is the rodent we'll be feeding her. So this is actually um, smaller than the biggest point on the snake. So uh, normally, you know, we could feed her a 100 gram rat. This rat right here is about a 60 gram rat. But uh, basically I chose 60 gram rats for everybody today. So while this will be like a pretty small meal for her, she'll probably be able to eat again in about five days. Just put her back here. This video might be pretty long, We're already five minutes in. Our female, whoop, and I am gonna be cleaning these tubs by the way. Um, I take the rodents out because obviously they need time to thaw out and I will be cleaning these cages before feeding them It's never a good idea to feed your snake when there's crap in the cage They roll around with the rodent even if it's frozen You don't want them to end up like eating their own crap obviously But anyways, you can see she is gonna actually eat the same thing and again It's about the same diameter as the thickest part on her body um, It might appear like her body is actually bigger, but she is like on the water bowl right now so generally, even if you're feeding big prey items for ball pythons, you don't want to go with something that is 1.5 times the thickest point on their body. So like, you know, could this snake take a 100 gram rat? Maybe. Personally, I wouldn't be comfortable uh, feeding it a prey item of that size. So when we feed our snakes, our snakes are kept at about 85 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So generally, the lump should be um, evident in a snake like this for about 24 to 48 hours and after that you know you'll not notice the rat anymore and uh, generally when we feed this size we're able to feed them if we want every five days now there are certain snakes that we'll feed less often just because we don't plan on breeding these snakes uh, we'll feed them still at least once every week depending on their age so a, um, a ball python like this already sold chocolate ghost He'll eat once every seven days. But a an adult ball python maybe will eat once every 10 days. Uh, depending on if it's a male or a female, our males will only eat probably every two weeks. Just because there's no reason to get your male really big and fat. Um, generally you want to keep the females in really good condition. And obviously, depending on the time of the season, you'll feed animals more or less, especially, you know, going into the breeding season. So I'm gonna show you guys now how we thaw our rodents out here. So the way I thaw the rodents out is in water. I use cold water just because I'm going to be here for a little while. Uh, as I said before, I'm going to be spot cleaning cages. Um, I like to feed the snakes right at the end of my time here at our uh, breeding facility. So I use cold water and generally that'll take, um, that'll take about probably two hours to thaw all of these out um, there's 13 in there obviously depending on the size of the rat it'll take more or less time um, I use cold water again because I'm not in any rush to feed them if you want you could use lukewarm water or even a little bit hotter than that but you definitely don't want to use boiling water um, it's a common misconception that you have to thaw them out in really warm water uh, in my experience this is not the best thing especially if you use really hot water you could actually um, burn the outside of the rat it'll almost be like you're cooking the outside of the rat and in the body will still stay frozen and sometimes the snakes will not accept that so um, again I thaw them out in room temperature water and uh, generally you know it takes depending on the size anywhere from like I would say five minutes for a pinky mouse to probably two or three hours depending on the number I'm feeding and the size I'm feeding. So the next clip you'll see here is how I warm the rodents up for the ball pythons. Alright guys, so here's the next part. How do you know when your frozen rodents are ready? Well, you will take the rodent in your hand and you will squeeze the size gently. You want to make sure it's completely thawed out. If any part of the rodent is still frozen, typically the snake isn't going to take it. So, I can tell that all my rats here are thawed out. Now I'm going to put on hot water um, because the animals we're feeding today are pythons. So, obviously to uh, get them to strike um, as quick as possible, 
it'll be better if I heat up my rats. Um, those heat sensitive pits in their face will basically pick up the heat and they'll be more enticed to strike. Now, certain pythons, boas, uh, that have crazy feeding responses, you don't even need to do this step of warming the rats up. But uh, for ball pythons, typically it's a good thing to do. And especially if uh, you're trying to convert an animal onto um, frozen rodents, you definitely want to make sure you heat them up for boas and pythons. Now other snakes, let's say like corn snakes, rat snakes, stuff like that, you actually don't need to heat them up uh, at all um, because those snakes don't have the uh, heat sensitive pits. So you can just give it to them right away as long as they are completely thought out. So earlier I had told you guys that don't want to use super hot water to thaw them out, but now that they are thawed out, we are going to use really, really hot water. So I'll pour out the water that's still in here because it's pretty cold water. Now, we'll heat these guys up. So it should be like pretty hot the water like this you know it, it bothers me i'm not going to leave my fingers under there for more than like a couple seconds that's typically um how hot i like the water to be you could go with something a little bit cooler or a little bit hotter you don't want to get too much hotter than this so obviously i don't have a thermometer in my hand or else i tell you guys the exact temperature but typically you know if you're using um the faucet you just put on uh, the hot as high as it can and now we're ready to feed and uh, I will just point out one more thing in this clip uh, very good idea to have a nice pair of either hemostats uh, forceps tongs um, you do not want to get nailed by your snake uh, because especially when you have a rodent on the tip of your fingers if the snake accidentally grabs your hand with the smell of the rodent in the air, it'll think it actually has the rodent in its mouth. It'll give you a food response bite, which hurts a hell of a lot more than a defensive bite. And uh, then you may be stuck with a snake on your hand for a couple minutes, which is never fun. All right, guys, let's get to feeding some snakes. All right, guys, so when you're trying to get your snakes onto frozen thawed rodents, I would recommend you try feeding them at night with the lights off. Um, most snakes are nocturnal. You know, there are exceptions, obviously, and for those snakes, you probably want to feed them during the day. But for these ball pythons that are typically uh, a nocturnal species um, looking to eat at night, it would be a good idea to close the lights. But uh, obviously, you would not be able to see uh, too much in this video if I close the lights right now. So let's start feeding. Now, when I feed frozen thawed rodents, I like to grab them by the uh, the shoulders. Some people like to do this. I really don't like holding them by the tail. Um, the reason why I don't like this is because if a snake hits the rat hard enough, it may totally miss the rat and either grab the tongs, something like that. It's very easy for the rat to bounce out of the way when you're holding it by the tail. So what I like to do is I grab it right there by the midsection. I basically have the hemostats right underneath the armpits of the rodent. And this way I'm able to shake the rat a little bit, kind of give it more of a natural movement rather than, you know, the zombie rat, like upside down. I find it works a lot better. Um, you'll also notice I don't have any paper towel here. Uh, I do not dry off the rodents. I find it's a great way to assure that your snake is getting proper hydration to feed them the prey items when they're wet. Now again, there's always exceptions to the rules when you're trying to get your snake over to frozen thawed. Sometimes it would be a better idea to dry the rodent off. Um, for those of you that will say, ah, oh, but if you give a wet rodent, you know, substrate is going to stick to it. Yes, sometimes this is the case. I've never had a snake have any kind of uh, problems with impaction. Uh, obviously in the wild, you know, snakes are going to eat some of uh, what's on the ground. And uh, yeah, never had a problem with uh, impaction with snakes. Anyways, let's get started here. So, our snakes here are used to getting fed in the dark, so we may have a couple that don't take, but there you go. He's a really good eater, that guy. 
he is actually sold. Here's the chocolate hypo. This is another guy who has been sold. Just waiting to get the final payments for them. So you see that was more of a defensive bite, just trying to see what it is. He did that basically because he's a mean snake, but that is obviously the food strike. So again, like I was saying, if, um, if you don't have feeding forceps, oh, I'm gonna take out anything for her, because these rats are a bit too big. If you don't have feeding forceps, you risk uh, basically getting bit, and the snake will not let go sometimes for a little while. So I mean, again, when uh, when it goes back to um, you know frozen versus live, um, some people they want to see the snake like you know grab and coil the rat. I mean, whoa! <laughs> Obviously, as you could tell, either way, you get to see the snake attack and grab the rat. They think it's alive. So right now he's constricting that rodent. He's trying to kill that rodent. Little does he know. Obviously, it's already dead. Tuck him in there. Oh, Spectre Pastel. Some of this stuff I really have to watch out for because uh, another thing that I will say, guys, is, you know, I see a lot of you that uh, basically like, oh, man, how could you keep snakes in racks? The, the difference, especially with ball pythons, the huge difference that these snakes have in their feeding responses when you keep them in racks compared to when you keep them in glass aquariums is insane. These guys are basically, they're all ready and willing to eat. And sometimes you do encounter feeding problems with ball pythons. Obviously, this is not the case for us, <laughs> as you may be able to tell. Um, you know, I could go into a whole another video almost on how I hate glass aquariums for keeping snakes. It'll probably be a video for the future, but uh, I mean, guys, rack systems when you're raising snakes, especially baby snakes, is the way to go. Uh, maybe we have somebody who's a little bit shy here. Pull out the bin a little bit more. And there you go. I tend to ramble in a lot of my videos, especially when I'm doing something like this where I'm trying to think and do stuff at the same time. And when I, <laughs> what I mean by that is I'm trying to talk to you guys here and I'm trying to feed the snakes, avoid getting bit, all that good stuff. That is a pretty good example of a miss. And there you go. Another thing I will say guys that has happened to me is I always make sure I remove the rodent because sometimes they get the rodent in the water bowl and then they'll leave the rodent there and that is probably the most disgusting mess that a snake could possibly make is when they leave their food item in the food bowl. It smells absolutely terrible and it is a, uh, a nightmare especially if you're not in for a couple days afterwards. at six minutes here so to show you the last three that we're gonna feed again you can see some of these animals they're they're flying out of their cages they know what time it is they know it's time to eat and typically you actually hear people say that they have problems getting their ball pythons to feed um, like I said we feed these guys every couple of days so it's not because they're starving that they're uh, flying out of their cages like this is just the Keeping snakes in a rack system again, I can't say enough about it. Um, not all snakes, by the way, but baby snakes and uh, certain snakes like ball pythons, a lot of people think that they need these giant cages, but I find ball pythons, especially when young, if you give them a cage that's too big, they'll stop eating. So here's our super chocolate female she goes and the last one is gonna be our chocolate butter ghost female that you guys saw earlier so in closing guys I hope you enjoyed the video uh, please subscribe 
And of course, like our page, Safari Reptiles, on Facebook. That is www.safari, oh, Jesus Christ. That is uh, facebook.com slash Safari Reptiles. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, this is how we do it here at Safari Reptiles. This is how we feed our snakes frozen thawed rodents. This is what we've been doing for years. It works great for us. Uh, we don't have any problem feeders. You guys could count. I mean, there's been times when this rack has been full. That rack is full. All these 36 bins are full. Every single snake eats frozen thawed rats. Thanks guys. Take care. See you later.